I'm always very happy that my colleague here at TalkSport, WSL expert and broadcaster, Shaban Ahern, uh, joins us. But Shaban, even today, I think you'd be a bit sceptical about joining us because of this specific subject. A bit of a farcical story surrounding a farcical match abandonment six minutes into play during Chelsea women against Liverpool women. I mean, the, the, the word is embarrassment, I'm afraid, is it not? Yeah, it was embarrassing, even watching the six minutes uh, of the game yesterday, which was broadcast live on BBC Two. It was like watching a preview of Dancing on Ice. Uh, players <laughs> skating about everywhere. It was not a pretty sight. Yeah, embarrassing is the word for it, Jim. What, 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 why was it allowed to even start? Have you got to the bottom of this, Siobhan? So at half past nine, there was a pitch inspection, which was failed. They decided to put the covers on, put the heaters on. Um, and we're understanding that Matt Beard, the Liverpool manager, was informed then that they were looking to shift the kickoff time back to around about two o'clock. It was set, scheduled to kick off at half past 12. So he was surprised when it was then good to go at half past 12. We saw Emma Hayes and Matt Beard footage of them looking at the pitch before kickoff and going, things don't seem right but it was deemed okay and safe to go ahead by the referee and the officials who were in charge. So perhaps they weren't quite up to scratch with making that decision. Six minutes into the game, five and a half minutes played, uh, the referee then blew the whistle after multiple people going on their backside. It's a shame, obviously, Simon, because this is a women's game yeah. getting high-profile coverage. Yeah. And when the opportunity comes along, I'm afraid it ends up very much with red faces all round. And it shouldn't. But I think the underlying argument, and I think Shaban would make this argument, is that there needs to be more investment into the infrastructure of women's football so that the stadiums that they play in are more befitting of the elite leagues for women's football. And then we get into this eternal conundrum about how much money is in women's football to be able to provide the support for that elite league, at least the elite league, to be able to fulfil things like basic fixtures. They did everything they possibly could to get this game on, from blowing up um, you know, huge covers to putting hot air underneath, underneath, underneath to try and get the pitch uh, into a position where they could play it. But I think Shaban's argument, I'm not, I'm not going to just jump across you, Shaban, but I think your argument is, and Emma Hayes's, the Women's Premier League needs to do something about the quality of the environments they're playing in. And I think the argument would be yeah. playing at the men's stadiums or at the stadiums of the of the club that uh, they play for. Or get get under soil heating in. Yeah, but the problem is, Shaban, uh, and, and I'm sorry, am I right in what I'm saying there, Shaban? Have I, have I said what you're thinking? Well, I would be appealing for under soil heating. It's the fact that, you know, these clubs can afford that. This is Chelsea Football Club. Todd Bowley and his arrival spent half a billion on players coming in. I know you could fork out 50, 60 grand to get the undersoil heating in place at King's Meadow and to be able to pay those bills monthly. I know it's an expensive time for everyone, but money bags at Todd Bowley can afford to do that for this club. The only game that wasn't affected yesterday in the WSL, if it came to being postponed or kickoff time, was Reading against Manchester United. Reason being, Reading's home ground is the Majesty, the Select Car Leasing Stadium, and that's the only non Premier League. WSL club in the, the Women's Super League is Reading and even they can manage to fork this out for their women and that's no disrespect, no slant to Reading as a football club whatsoever but they're giving their women the best pitch to play on. Chelsea can do that. All these clubs can do that. Why aren't they then? Because the question that I heard being raised was the Premier League needs to intervene. It's nothing to do with the Premier League. It's to do with the individual clubs and what they're prepared to put yeah. into their football teams. So why wouldn't Chelsea... For as you quite rightly say, for a tiny amount of money in comparison to probably one week's wages for one of the players playing in their yeah, Premier League football exactly. team in the men's side, why wouldn't they provide this, you know, the prerequisite amount of environment, Shaban? Why wouldn't they? Perhaps they don't see them as important enough. Perhaps they see them as perhaps you know second class when it comes to the men. We all know that the men's teams bring in a lot more money than the women. You know, I'm not going to sit here and try and argue that because it's not true. We're all aware of that. The fact is, if these clubs own and take in the women's team, do it right, do it properly, give them the basis of what they need to be able to fill these, to fill these fixtures. I did a, a, a thing on this last night on YouTube. The amount of people are saying, move it, move the league then to the summer. You're Chelsea Football Club. 
you can you can provide this for your women. You know, I have my own thoughts on, on Chelsea Football Club and how they treat the women anyway. You've got the best manager, you've got the, the, the best footballers, some of the best footballers in the world in that squad, some of the best backroom members of staff. Yeah. And then you go to Cobham, and Jim, you've been to Cobham. Yeah. You drive in there, over on the right, it's this big, beautiful building, five-minute walk down the road. That's where you meet Chelsea women. It doesn't feel like Chelsea then would be taking full ownership of supporting maybe the women in that. And that's just my thoughts on that. Sure. Uh, that's, that's a valid night, point. Means, it's, it's a valid yeah. point, Shaban, but you've also got to get two things. I'm very surprised that Emma Hayes would not have already flagged this up at the beginning of the season to suggest that she needs better facilities. She's got lots of currency at Chelsea. She's got lots of oh, reputation. No, no, she's got lots of safety herself Hayes as well. Said that. I'm not saying that Emma Hayes has said that, but she has said yesterday it's time to consider understanding. Oh, I understand. But, uh, but, but, but by the same token, for, there's two things you've got to accept. That the economic viability of the women's football at this moment in time needs a shot in the arm, not just from the clubs, but from the broadcasters and from the football yeah. fraternity full stop. Well, how about the FA stumping it? Well, we don't want the FA anywhere near it. The FA are incompetent. And the one thing that women have done is actually turn around and say, well, we're on our own Premier League. Thank they you. can afford it. Well, the, the Premier League was, the, pre the men's Premier League was not run by the FA. And the reasons why it's successful is because the FA were nowhere near it. And I quite admired the women saying the same thing, which is actually, we don't need your help. Thank you very much. We'll build our own Premier League. So who should pay for this? I mean, Emma Hayes well, is saying, Ch Simon, Chelsea. no game at the top level Chelsea. of women's games should be cancelled. We need undersoil heating. We don't live in Barbados. Ch She's right. Well, Chelsea, so who's going to pay? Chelsea should pay for it because ultimately they can't yeah. virtue signal on one hand about how important women's football is not not support it. On the other side yeah. of the argument, Emma Hayes, with due respect to her, has got lots to say for herself. I'm very surprised she isn't able to leave her out 60,000 quid to put under soil heating into a football stadium that she plays our players on. So I think they're all a little bit complicit yeah. in allowing mm. women's football to be marginalised. Here's Stuart. I, there, I, I, I can't believe that the, the women's team do not play on the same stadium as the men's team. Do you know, it's, you know sure, you, it's a very good point. It's, it's a very good point. And Chelsea's uh, second game, I think, at the at the... At Stamford Bridge yep. was, you know, for the first time in so many years was the Champions League uh, last time around. And I was at that game and I was watching just the preparations for it. They're an elite club. You know, they are doing it at the best they possibly can. I've been to Arsenal many times at London Coney watching these women train and how their treatment is. It feels like they're definitely on that level. And they've been represented at the Emirates almost feels like week in and week out. So the opportunity is coming um, and it can always go that one step further. But it is, it's wonderful to see these women get that experience. I actually did the calls yesterday around Leicester Football Club, their bottom of the WSL at the moment, still fairly new into this league. They actually have training facilities that were used to be occupied by the men. Yeah. So they have under soil heating available for their training. Do they turn it on? For their training. Well, that's another they, question. There you go, Shaban. I mean, this could, be, this could end Shaban, up being a tipping point. Well, maybe. But Shaban, can I ask you a question? Because I, I've, I've got to push back on the argument about playing in the men's stadium, not just because I want to be clever with you. But what are the attendances looking like? Because last year I watched um, Leicester play, uh, Leicester women's play, and the stadium was empty. There was one man and a dog, and you could hear everybody whistling in it. Uh, and, mm. and, and I want to understand that there's been a development since the European Championships that, that gives bigger attendances, that merit playing in 40,000, seated stadiums for both the players and the fans what's it been like this year as far as attendances are concerned well if you want to go back to the Euros you're looking at the Lionesses the captain of the Lionesses Leah Williamson plays for Arsenal Arsenal have occupied at the Emirates seven times I think since the Lionesses yep. won the Euros Arsenal have been at the Emirates seven times those WSL games have managed to make an average of 40,000 in attendance. Fair enough. Uh, so they are absolutely bringing Good. them the money in at the door. It's important that the women get to facilitate those. But you're going and seeing Beth Mead, Viviana Mead, and my, you've got household names in women's football there at the Emirates and the access to get to them and possibly even get a selfie is possible at this point in time. Leicester don't quite have that level, yeah. that calibre yeah. of players, but they are really pushing their women's team and that's important but then, as well. But then, but then you've got, Siobhan, I, I, again, I don't want to be playing devil's advocate, but if you've got one set of mm. teams that can generate support and they play at different, at smaller stadiums and you've got the bigger clubs playing at the men's stadiums that have got all the facilities, you're creating a slightly uneven sporting landscape. Well, I can say, Siobhan, if I jump in, and I'll, I'll bring, I'll bring this to a conclusion. We, 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 we hope to have some dialogue soon with Todd Bowley and it's something we'll put to him. Would you consider... Yeah, I mean, that, that's what you're going to do, Jim, on the top of your list, are you? Well, no, it'll be on the list. Well, yeah, it is on the list, but right? it'll be on the list. Why, Why not? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, it's a source of disappointment and it's a source to a degree of embarrassment to, to the women's game today that this occurred, is it not? 
It was. And watching it yesterday, to be able to, the, the access to just now to be able to turn on the telly on a Sunday afternoon and watch the likes of Chelsea uh, in action in a, in a big fixture, and then to watch six minutes of, of, of skating around yeah. was a little bit of a letdown to Chelsea Football Club. You know, none of the players, not the standard, not the managers, anything like that. It seemed like sure. Chelsea put themselves in that position. They're so much better than that. And the bottom line is they can afford it. They can do it for this team. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.